I also have like the ones making the blood hoss. Uh, just a lot of different random, different things. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video, you can watch that one and then watch this one or just continue watching this video right here, right here, right here. But today I have my trusty, trusty, trusty pencil and pencil sharpener, which I'm going to be sharpening right now. But to make sure you don't make it too, too sharp, 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 sharp. There we go. And then I also have the Sharpie, which uh, I'll be doing like the numberings and the titles of the conferences, which I don't know if I'm going to put all on one paper or do separate sheets of paper, but I will figure that out. <laughs> I'll see how much uh, room I take up. So, so first, I think I'm going to do East first and then the West, just because I feel like the West is the more anticipated uh, conference, I would say. So, uh, I will be doing it East, East, East first. So, I'm hoping this video doesn't take too long, but I guess that we shall see. Um, I'll do two lines for each one, so we'll do one seed. Surprise, surprise, surprise team making their first playoff appearance. Hopefully you guys can see this. I have the, yes, the Jan Gunnan Robin Hawks. Uh, Trey Young, I feel like he's going to have another really good, decent season. I feel like with all the young talent they have, I feel like they become a very dangerous team that you won't know if you're going to play a, a good team or a bad team that night. That could be very even. Um, it's going to be really hard to see what happens to all the other teams in the, the East because, you know, there's a lot of, I don't want to say bottom feeder teams, but teams like the Pistons, Orlando, um, you know, the, you don't know what the Raptors are going to happen or, or the, the, the Hornets or anything like that. Um, so, uh, these teams are very hard to, to rank around in this area, but I feel like the Hawks somehow are going to make the, the playoffs. They're going to they're gonna make the jump. I feel like they're going to really push on developing their young players and play them a lot. So players like Trey Young, John Collins, they're not going to be trying to, to take no more. They have a good core right now, and they're going to try to win as much and develop those players as much as possible. So that's kind of the theory I'm going off of. Next. We 
best player going into next season with Pascal Siakam hopefully makes another big jump next season uh, I mean they replace Kawhi with you know Stanley Johnson I think or Rodney Hollis Jefferson sure they still have Serge Ibaka and they have Marc Gasol I just it, it's hard to put them any higher than this but I mean sure they could be the fifth seed of course the the depth may come in handy during the later season when you know all these other teams are you know these one two three four seeds are trying to rest their players they perhaps might be able to make a push because they have so much depth they don't have to rest any, any players um so i definitely feel like the raptors could somehow make it up even further but right here i think it's a good spot for them pascal siakam needs to make you know uh make a, a, a good jump or even maybe stay the same but they could make it but i mean it's just gonna be him and kyle lowry which you guys know how not so keen i am on, on kyle lowry but he's pretty good uh, uh floor general i guess um and next we have the kevin durantless nets with Kyrie irving leading the squad this season uh yeah you know they got kyle lowry they got um spencer Dinwiddie. Silver resigned. They still have Jared Allen. They have DeAndre Jordan, who might be coming off the bench or even starting at center with Jared Allen. So that front court is going to be super dangerous. Uh, I feel like the Nets could definitely be a a a uh, you know a home court advantage contender if everything goes perfectly well, locker room chemistry, everything of like that goes well with Kyrie. I feel like this is a good spot for them. They could even go a little higher. Um, but that's the thing. Can Kyrie Irving lead a young squad? playoffs and the you know the Boston team last year made the playoffs but it's hard obviously with you know going against Giannis and everything like that it's pretty hard it's pretty tough to be honest of course but I feel like they should have put up a better fight with Kyrie and the top the, the squad they had last year in Boston so it's gonna be interesting to see if Kyrie can step it up a little bit he's still gonna be the number one guy going into next season because Kevin Durant's gonna be hurt for all of next season so uh, I'm gonna be very interested to see if he can do it but I think five spots is pretty good Make sure you guys comment down below some different spots you would put these teams uh, or anything like that. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, the Pacers. I didn't see. The Indiana Pacers. Uh, it's basically the same team, just without Malcolm Brogdon. So that's, of course, that's a bit. No, no, that's the Bucks. Yeah, they have Malcolm Brogdon now. Excuse me. Yeah, they have the Malcolm Brogdon now. Uh, which is a great uh, uh, key uh, position at point guard that they definitely needed. So now they have Brogdon at the one. Victor Oladipo is another great. He's going to be coming back. I'm sure he's going to be uh, in good shape because he played. He didn't play barely at all last year. So I think he's going to be in good shape. He's going to be ready. Um, uh, Miles Turner uh, is also a great player. I feel like he's going to make a big jump. Uh, you know, better on defense. Uh, even though he's great at blocking shots, he's not very good at controlling the rim and things like that. So I think next season, that will be great for him. Uh, the Zabonis, also another player that I'm really, really big on, who hopefully starts next season, will start and hopefully can make uh, this team a little bit better. Uh, I'm very excited to see how that team goes. Sure, they did lose um, Darren Collinson. I think it was Darren Collinson. They, their point guard, because uh, he retired uh, prematurely, which is totally fine, but it's going to be interesting to see how that team plays out. This is definitely a team that could fall if things go bad, but I feel like as of right now, going to the next season, I feel like four is a pretty pretty good spot for either of these three teams. These teams, these three teams could definitely be fighting for position in my in uh, my opinion. But number three, good old Boston Celtics. Now these Celtics. Center, but definitely obviously not the defense. 
that's the mind of, of uh, Alfred, but I think Kenner will put up good numbers. Uh, I think Jason Tatum hopefully, you know, puts on some a little bit more weight, gets more better uh, basketball IQ, because last season in the playoffs, man, that he, he froze up, and uh, it was pretty sad to watch, but I feel like next season will be great for him as a learning experience to be, you know, now the top guy. I think he's definitely going to be the go-to more than Kemba. I think Kemba will just be, you know, be like a, like a safety. You know, he'd be, he'd be there just in case Jason Tatum doesn't, you know, blow up on games and stuff like that. Doesn't do really good offensively. And then Gordon Hayward, of course, is going to be, could be hopefully more healthy than he was last season. So hopefully he makes another good jump uh, in his injury. And I feel like the Celtics will still be fine. They'll still be a finals, Eastern Conference finals contender. But going past that, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, next we have... feel like the 76ers are going to take next season extremely seriously. And with that being said, I feel like Joel Embiid will get some rest next season. And with that, I feel like they'll, not due to injury, but I think due to rest, I think last season they pushed Joel Embiid too far. And you can see in the playoffs, he kind of tired out and tuckered out, which is what's going to happen because he's such a big guy and such a dominant force. I think overusing him during the regular season, I feel like you could definitely see that. But now that they have Al Horford, I think they can bench bench uh, Joel Embiid more and use him more during the later stages of the playoffs, which is exactly what they need to do. They don't need to care about getting the one seed. They just need to care about having Joel Embiid healthy and Ben Simmons hopefully, you know, getting better. And as I said in my last video, I started talking about point guards. I showed a video of Ben Simmons hitting jump shots and things like that. He's definitely coming in next season with a better jump shot. I'm really excited to see how Ben Simmons can play. Um, they also have Josh Richardson, who's kind of like a off-brand Jimmy Butler, uh, who's a good 3 and D player. They have Al Horford, who's, like I said before, a great defensive mind, who could definitely play the four spot or even come off the bench as the backup center or even start when Joel Embiid needs some rest going on like back, uh, back-to-backs and things like that and long road trips. So I think that's going to be a perfect spot for them. Could they be the one seed? 100%. But I would want them to take their time with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Make sure they're ready for the playoffs so they can unleash the beast for uh, the playoffs and not really burn out, uh, kind of like what they did last year. And, uh, of course, number one, we have... The Bucks. I have a feeling that the Bucks are going to go all out this season again. I feel like Giannis is going to not take any days off. I feel like the team's going to try super hard to be the best they can be. Now, will that be their downfall in the playoffs? We shall see. But in my opinion, I feel like Giannis is going to go for that MVP again. He seems like he really wants it. He just came from the uh, the FIBA World Cup or the whatever that just happened when USA lost. Um, so he definitely looked like he's, he's game ready. He's going through a lot of training and things like that. So I think like he's going to be in a stride. But I feel like that might hurt them in the playoffs if they try too hard uh, to push Giannis past to what he can be. It could lead to injury. Let's knock on wood real quick. That he doesn't get injured. Uh, you know, they might push him too hard, which hopefully they don't. Hopefully they take good care of him and the team and everything like that. Uh, they did lose Malcolm Brogdon. So these two teams could definitely flip so I definitely see that happening, but I feel like going into the next season, I feel like this is a pretty good little squad here of the top eight teams. I think that they're going to go in at the end of the, the 2020 season, but uh, obviously, you know, notable teams, Orlando Magic, I feel like the Vucevic and Aaron Gordon team is, it, it, it's at its peak, it's at its prime. Now, last season, obviously, during the playoffs, they beat Toronto one game, the first game, that was a crazy game. That will never happen again. So I feel like the Magic really need to take a look at themselves and think of, you know, trade bait with Aaron Gordon, trade bait Vucevic. They need they need to switch it up. They need a big powerhouse guy down there in Orlando, which they haven't had since Dwight Howard, which was like 10 years ago. So um, I feel like they either need to blow that team up or somehow get get better somehow with the trade draft picks or things like that. They do have Marco Fultz, who I hear is doing a lot better shooting-wise. So... I mean, Mark Hill, Aaron Gordon, Vucevic, who knows what could happen with that team, but uh, I feel like this is definitely a team that down here could could make it. Um, 
any other teams. I mean, the Hornets obviously don't really have a chance anymore. The Wizards, it kind of depends on uh, John Wall's health and Bradley Beal, but I feel like if they could have, do a rickety start, I feel like they could they could trade one of them if John Wall comes in and it's the same, or if John Wall comes in and Bradley Beal gets all mad and wants to be asked for a trade. That could definitely happen, but I feel like that team is a full team. It's just basically John Wall and Bradley Beal. So that's my opinion on that. Um, you know, the Knicks, <laughs> I mean, Archie Bear's going to be good. Uh, that Knicks team's going to be pretty interesting to watch, but don't really see them making the playoffs. But I feel like this is a pretty solid squad for the playoffs. Obviously, you know, with Orlando, could definitely slip into that eighth spot, but I'm going to take a pretty risky chance here and say the Hawks are going to make the playoffs. Alrighty. Now, we are on to the Western Conference. So, one, two. Super dangerous, so I think they might even let you know Steph take some games off or 
PlayStation games off or J-Mod, blah, blah, blah. And I find the team's really going to be looking towards the playoffs more than just the regular season, their standings. Because anywhere you get ranked in the standings, it's going to be a tough matchup, so they're not going to really care. Uh, sure, they're going to try, obviously, but I feel like in the playoffs, that's a very a dangerous team to face. And I think they know that, and I think they might not, I don't want to say not try, but they're going to be maybe off the gas pedal a lot and wait till the playoffs, uh, in my opinion. But I feel like they definitely could flip flop with the Blazers. Now, Blazers, I feel like, still aren't there yet. Sure, the depth on this team is amazing. They have Hassan and Rodney Hood and Kent Bazemore. Uh, Mario Rosanio, I think, I think, I, I think is a good uh, key to the, to the team. Uh, but, again, we still don't have a four. We have, I mean, Zach Collins is going to play our power forward spot, but he's been playing center for most of his career. I don't think playing with two seven-footers can win now in today's NBA. Uh, it's very scary to think that we don't have a power forward, but if the Blazers trade Hassan Whiteside for Kevin Love, uh, which could definitely happen, or even for Blake Griffin, I feel like having a third star like that would be perfect for this team, and I could rank them even higher. But I think playing it safe with the Blazers, I feel like this is a good spot. They could even fall even lower to the Warriors. I think it just comes to, I mean, obviously Dame and CJ, they're going to do awesome. Yusuf Nurkic is going to come back uh, halfway through the season. I'm pretty nervous about how well he's going to look, if they're going to rush him back. Who knows? Uh, I've seen some pictures of him, and he looks he looks good. Like, the scar doesn't look bad. His leg doesn't look bad uh, at all. Like, the muscle, I mean, the, the leg doesn't look less muscular or less fatty. It looks totally fine. Um, but I think I don't see this team being a super title contender. But, of course, like, any one of these teams could win the playoffs. One through seven uh, could win the, the championship, in my opinion. But I feel like the Blazers, uh, I'm not too uh, key on their musicians for the summer. I feel like getting a power forward would have been, would have been a, a lot better, but um, much like the other teams, I feel like the Lakers are going to be looking for the playoffs as well. They're going to be resting LeBron. They're going to be, you know, it's not as deep as the team, so I think they might lose a lot of games. They don't have DeMarcus Cousins anymore. We still have to see how that team fits together. You know, they lost, um, well, I mean, they got Dwight Howard, but who knows how well he's going to be. He hasn't really played important team basketball in a long time. Um, plus, he don't went through like a totally different, you know, body transition. He looks super less muscular, but more muscular at the same time, if you know what I mean. It's less fatty, but more like strength, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm very interested to see how this team does, but again, they're obviously going to wrestle LeBron a lot, look towards the playoffs and the end of the playoff run to try to make a big run in the playoffs, so... Uh, I like the hockey resistance of Danny Green. I think having Rondo there is pretty good, too. Uh, he's going to be a good floor general. Quinn Cook, who's a good shooter, who showed on the Warriors. He's a, a player that can play big big minutes and make good games. So I think they're going to be fine. They're going to make the playoffs, but it comes down to resting LeBron. Uh, and then how well Anthony Davis plays, how much he's going to play, and all that jazz. So I think that's a good spot for them, but I think they could obviously be higher if you know they don't have to rest LeBron all that much. Now the Jazz are going to be showing how much they are contenders this season. I feel like they're going to try as as, 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 as hard as they can uh, to try to prove a point, and I feel like that might hurt them in the playoffs, but I mean, uh, they have Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell is another year in, hopefully he's a lot smarter this season than he was last season. They have Bogdanovich, which is a great acquisition for them, That was they were so lucky. Uh, I think they have Emmanuel Moutier coming off the bench as well. They have such a good team, and they also have Rudy Gobert still, which is just totally insane. And also having uh, Joe Ingles as well, playing the four spot or wherever they put uh, Bogdanovich. So that team is definitely still very good. Um, and this adding all the team, the, the players they have, uh, I can see them definitely going far in the East, I mean, in the West. And like I said, and these top seven teams in the West could definitely make 
just trying to play for a spot and for the finals and for a championship. They need to stop playing so singular to James Harden. And that team should be named the James Hardens because I feel like that's all that team really is. But they need to play more towards the goal of a championship and not just, you know, winning the most in the regular season. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel like if that happens, the Rockets will be totally fine. They still have a good team. It's definitely not as deep, but it's still be a, 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 good, a capable team. You know, they have them. Uh, Capella, they still have Austin Rivers. They have good, capable players. It just comes down to, uh, you know, how well Russell and the team mesh together, also with James Harden. And uh, I'm thinking it will. I feel like James Harden and Russell Westbrook are going to be fine. I think Russell Westbrook is going to be focusing a lot on playing off ball. And I'm hoping during the offseason he trained more for being, you know, off ball. And I feel like hopefully he learned that playing with Paul George. But if not, then I have to agree would definitely drop to a low seeding to like 7th or 6th. Um, but in the best case scenario, I feel like the Rockets could be totally fine uh, where they are. as well, but I think, uh, like for a lot of these teams, I'm thinking that they're going to be risking a lot of their star players for the playoffs, because any one of these teams can make it to the finals if, you know, if everything goes right for them, so I feel like with having Kawhi and Paul George playing the same position, I feel like you can take either one of them out and play the other one in if they don't play them both at the same time, so you're not missing a lot out, and this team's going to be probably the best or one of the best defensive teams in the league. They have Montrose Harrow still, they have Zubox still, they have Patrick Beverly still, they have basically the same team, they have more Arquist, who, uh, as a Blazer fan, will know how much he gives defensively to a team, having a big, lengthy, lengthy wing defender, so, uh, I feel like the team's gonna be totally fine, um, and I think that, uh, they could definitely be the one seed, the two seed, it definitely just depends on health of Kawhi, who had a very long season last season, uh, and hopefully that goes well. And then Paul George, who just came off an injury during the playoffs, how well he, you know, took all of that, all the criticism, and hopefully he plays it well with the Clippers. And Doc Rivers and the coaching, and they have Tyron Lou now, so hopefully that meshes well. And if it does, I think the Clippers are definitely, obviously, the favorite to win the title, but another team that could definitely see uh, uh, being a top four seed, obviously, but could be contending for that one seed. But season almost was the one seed and this team kept basically the entire same team together but they're all a year older all have been through long playoff series against San, uh, San Antonio and the Blazers they're more I would feel like hopefully more basketball like you playing through that their coach is going to be better playing through that I feel like this team is very hungry since the kind of heartbreak they had against the Blazers last season went losing on their own court that young team is all back together a year older, plus with Jeremy Grant. Uh, I think Jeremy Grant. Whoever that power forward was for the Thunder, they got him for cheap. They got him for basically nothing. It was another good defender uh, who could play the three or the four or can guard multiple positions. I feel like this team is still going to be perfectly fine, and they're going to be obviously in Denver, high altitude. They're going to be running and gunning like they did last year, and I feel like now that the Warriors lost Kevin Durant. I feel like Denver is definitely going to be the team in the regular season. In the regular season, who's going to do the best? But I feel like that team's going to lose to star power. Uh, I love Jokic. Uh, Nikola Jokic is an awesome center. Uh, you know, Jamal Murray is going to be the next Steph Curry. He's such a good player. He just needs to get more um, better, I guess, basketball IQ-wise and assisting and leading a team uh, at the point guard position. And then they also have... Um, Gary Harris is a good player. Um, they have Tory Craig, I think his name is, is a good wing defender. So they have pieces there. I just, star power wise, I feel like just having one great player and a bunch of good players. You know, Joel Murray's all star caliber player. Uh, I think they're not there yet. So I think in the regular season, they're going to do amazing playoff start. I feel like they're going to lose to the star powers of, you know, Kawhi, Paul George, um, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, LeBron AD, I guess Damian and CJ. CJ's definitely kind of on the same level as Jamal Murray, but I'd probably rather take CJ McCollum in my own opinion. So, uh, again, I guess definitely see these, any these teams could be flip-flopped anywhere around. I could see the Blazers being very good like they were last year. I could see the Lakers being a top three seed. I could see the Rockets being, you know, a 
seventh, eighth seed. It all comes down to what ifs. And this is just my list. Uh, please uh, be respectful of my choices like I would to you. Uh, let me know down in the comments down below how you would feel uh, about all these teams. Obviously, uh, you know, San Antonio could definitely make a playoff spot, but I don't think having an old, aging Marcus Aldridge with DeMar DeRozan is not great of a team. And I feel like Greg Popovich is kind of losing his touch, as you can see from the, uh, the FIBA World Cup, that they didn't do so hot with Greg Popovich. So I have a feeling that they're going to miss the playoffs and they might even pull that team up. Uh, the Kings last year didn't make any big acquisitions like I thought they were. They just re-signed Harrison Barnes to a big contract for some reason, and they lost Willie Collins Stein to the Warriors. So that team I don't really see making that big of a push. Sure, they're going to be maybe fighting for a playoff spot with Dallas, but other than that, I really don't have any idea. Uh, the Suns with DeAndre Hayden and Booker still aren't there yet, but I feel like in the next two, three years, they could definitely be in the in the playoffs. I would, I would think so. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching the video. video. Uh, sorry if I feel like I'm rushing, but uh, this video could get very lengthy, and I'm trying to keep it at, as, at a, a reasonable length for you guys because all my videos are super long, and I'm trying to make sure you guys are able to watch all of them and watch through it all. So, if you have, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe. I'm trying to hit two, 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 one, two thousand subs by the end of the year, uh, which we're pretty close to. So, I really hope you guys are doing well. I really need to make a normal sit down video with you guys and talk to you guys about life and things like that. Uh, I really miss that with you guys. So, uh, I really hope to see you guys again very soon. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.